What's happening folks? In this video, we are gonna go over measuring tools, specifically the tape measure, and we're gonna try to cover most of what you need to know in order to use these tools effectively. Um, we're gonna go over the different kinds, the most important features. Let's get right to it. The first one I wanna show you guys is like the most common. This is what you used in school, or if you went to Catholic school like I did, this is what the nuns would wrap you over the knuckles with. We also have the carpenter's ruler or folding woodworking rule. This is your grandfather's ruler and preferred by some of the old heads, some of the more uh, meticulous finished carpenters. You may choose to use a 100 foot tape measure. This one spools out to 100 feet. The shorter length tape measures are the ones that we're gonna focus on. The most common ones that you're gonna find on job sites today is a 16 or 25 foot tape measure. This is in every single tool belt on every single project site here in the United States of America. The shorter tape has a hook at the end. The tape is made of steel and it's an inch and an eighth wide. There's some notations and features on this, but before you guys get started using your tape measure, there's something you need to check out. If you have a damaged tape measure, if the tape is cracked, bent, split, if it doesn't retract anymore, if the spring has been damaged, if it doesn't lock anymore and it just retracts on you, you're, you're risking cuts, uh, you're risking problems, and those tape measures should be taken out of use and replaced with a newer tape. There's a few different parts to the tape measure. The first is the housing or the case. This is the plastic that surrounds all the components that make this thing operate, right? There's the case length, which in this case, this is my preferred, is the 16 footer. The spring, this is, works like our constant force balancer in our windows. So when you let go, the spring recoils the tape, it spools inside. There's also this hook or rivet right here, which allows you to take a measurement by hooking it onto uh, the end of an edge, or it also has this hook slot right there. So if you have a nail, you can hook your tape measure onto the end of the nail and make your measurement. There's a thumb block right here, which allows you to lock the tape if you need two hands and need to see your measurement here in front of you. And lastly, there's a belt clip, which is removable. You can put this on your belt, or you can take this off, put this inside your tool belt. Next, I wanna talk about taking measurements. There's two types of measurements. There's the metric system, and then there is the imperial or standard system. And as the Tampa Marauders uh, would say, that there's two types of countries, those who use the metric system and those who sent a man to the moon. For this video, we're gonna be talking about the Imperial or SAE, the Standard American English System. This is broken down into inches and feet. So, when you look at a tape measure, all of these little increments are here. An abbreviation for feet would be the number followed by a single apostrophe, and the unit for inches is the number followed by two apostrophes. There's a lot more hash marks here because between each inch, it's broken down into increments of sixteenths. A carpenter may ask for something that is three and three sixteenths of an inch. Okay, and those are all denoted here. There's some other markings on here as well that I want to cover. You have a black arrow, which symbolizes feet. So every foot, you're going to see a black arrow. And there's also a red rectangle. If you are framing 16 inch on center, having this pulled out makes it easy to see where your studs are going to land. The last one that I want you guys to know about is this little black diamond right here. This one is by far the most confusing and one that I probably don't even still understand completely. So 19 inches, 19 and 3 16 of an inch is divisible by eight feet. So you can take a sheet good, whether it be a, a drywall panel or, or a piece of plywood or OSB, and you can mark that out so that you use five studs instead of six. If that sounds confusing, it's because it is, but you'll get that in due time. So I wanna go over a couple of cool little features. This is the, uh, the Stanley Fat Max. These have been around for about 20 years. And one of the nice things about this is this uh, Fat Max is the first one that extended out to almost 11 feet without bending or breaking. Standard tape measures extend to about seven feet without folding. The rivet hook and slide allows for accuracy. So I've had people say to me in the past, oh, the hook is loose on my tape measure. That's actually by design. So the reason for that is that hook is an eighth of an inch. So depending on whether you are hooking the end 
of a stud and pulling, or if you're measuring inside, that little bit of wiggle that you see right there makes up for the width of the hook itself. So if you're hooking on the outside, the rivets allow for the inch, you know, to start exactly where it's supposed to be. And if you're pushing here, that little wiggle room allows you to get the most accurate measurement here. So the other thing you wanna make sure of with your tape measure is proper storage and maintenance. The one thing is you wanna make sure you keep this dry. So if you're working in the rain or if you're working in a humid climate, this tape is gonna wear out faster. Remember, this is a piece of steel, metal, so it's gonna rust, it's gonna, it's gonna break down, but proper care, proper maintenance, this should last you guys about two years. You can remove the clip, like I mentioned before, to put this in your tool belt. Sometimes this clip interferes with the width of the tape measure slot in your tool belt. You wanna be careful not to ever overextend your tape. So this measures out to 16 feet. I wouldn't go much past 15 and a half. If you do that, you risk damaging the recoil spring inside and then you're out of tape measure. Now you should have a basic overview and understanding of how to use a tape measure. To review, remember there's special notations and symbols for professionals on the tape itself. You guys should get familiar with the features and also become comfortable with using your tape. In other words, practice, right? Being able to hook and make bends and fold your tape out, it actually requires a little bit of handling and getting used to it. And last, keep your tape measure dry. Knowing how to use a tape measure properly can make all the difference between having the correct measurements and incorrect. Remember, measure twice and cut once. Thank you very much and stay tuned for our next video.